Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's having a nice fall evening. Uh, tonight, uh, we've got the uh, pleasure of having Fausto back with us. We like to have Fausto uh, give some of his uh, teachings because he is an actual trader that has been very successful for years. Um, so he spends a lot of time uh, showing how you kind of master the art of, uh, of trading as well as the discipline of day trading. So without any further ado, Fausto, welcome back to the Candlestick Forum, and we're anxious to see what you got. Oop, Fausto, am I? No sound. All right. Fausto? I'm okay here. Just want to make an audio right. check. I think uh, my audio is coming in okay. Yeah, everything's okay. You're on. I've already introduced you. Hello, Ron. Good, good. All right, whenever you're ready, Steve. Yep. We've already introduced you. You're ready to go. Fausto, well, you're ready to go. We've we've already introduced. Can you hear me all right? Uh oh. Jim. All right, no problem. I guess I'm um, having a little audio check with uh, with Steve, but uh, how's everybody doing this uh, wonderful uh, evening at 8 o'clock at night here Eastern? Good, good, good. Good to see you all. Not very good. Well, it looks like I see some familiar faces here, some students of mine. Anybody a student of mine also? Just want to double check. Looks like we have a bunch of people here. Chris, good to see you. All right, excellent. All right, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Candlestick Forum. I'd like to, like to thank Steve Bigelow for having me again. Uh, it's always wonderful to talk to um, his audience of, uh, of followers and so on. It's, you know, in this trading community, I mean, it's so important that you team up with people that work together. And more importantly, you know, we, we trade exactly very, very similar ways because, you know, one of the, the best trades that anybody here could make is getting educated. And you know what? Trading is obviously the short term of tra when it comes to spending your time because there's a very, very small time when to trade and when not to trade. The, the longest time that you're going to spend in your life is training, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm going to show you the psychology of a winning trader, because, you know, this is probably like the hardest thing to teach, and, you know, we all have these great strategies, we all have these great things that work, but most importantly, you have to know how to have that attitude of how to get in and get out of it, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So, once again, I'd like to thank Steve and Jim and Becky and, and everybody else having me here. We're going to talk about an hour. i got a lot to cover, and with that to cover, I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can. All right? So let me just change the slide here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, could everybody see the slideshow presentation? Can everybody see it? All right, good. Just making sure. All right, so a little quick risk disclosure. You know, we always have to make these attorneys happy. Just always remember, ladies and gentlemen, there's a very high risk in trading and past results, stone indicative of the future. And Cyber Trading University and all those individuals, affiliates like Candlestick Forum, uh, want to take no responsibilities of your trades. Remember, we are here for educational purpose only, and please keep this as an educational lesson. Um, really quick also want to talk about who is Cyber Trading University and who I am. And you guys should know 
who you're talking to and who you're listening to because if we're telling you why we're trained a certain way, well, you should basically get a good idea of why do we really know what we're talking about. And I want you to know that I'm a human just like you. When I first started, I started when I was 22 years old. I'm actually 44 now. But when I started, I was one of the original day traders that started teaching people how to trade. I've been teaching people since 1995. I am one of, I am one of the original Souls Bandits that started back in the early 90s. Does, does anybody know what the Souls Bandits are? Ever hear it? We have any old books at all? Some of you have? Well, basically, the Souls Bandits is the original day traders. Okay, and over the years, I've competed uh, doing training challenges, and also became a 12-time champion. I traveled all over the world, been to China, been to Paris. I beat everyone in Europe. Um, and the thing is, is this: if I'm going to show you why to buy and sell stock and why I'm successful, well, obviously that's why I became a champion of what I what I do, and and that's how it came out over the years. So. Want to kind of get right into it so you know a little bit about, about Cyber Trading University. What we're going to learn today is I'm going to talk about a trader's journal, okay? This is the psychology part of trading. Getting out there, having a journal, managing your trades. It's almost, I like to kind of relate trading, which is I know we've all tried doing. It's like a diet, you know? We all try to diet. We all try to, you know, always could lose a couple extra pounds. But the thing is, how do you actually manage it? your diet, and it's like basically counting calories. I'm going to show you how to do that in the trading market with a trading journal. I'm also going to talk about finding stocks. I'm going to talk about the power of level three, total view. In that, I'm going to talk about high-frequency trades. I'm going to talk about the KISS method, reading charts, and much, much more. So let's get right into the trading journal. Now, being prepared every morning, and trading in the market, you know, there are a lot of stocks to trade. And I know I did talk about, uh, I put in the chat room for some of you with some stocks that I was trading this morning. And we got a lot of stuff to talk about. But um, I did talk about a stock like uh, VVUS. Uh, let me just put it in here again so you guys can read, um, put in the chat so you know what I'm talking about. There was a couple of stocks that we looked at this morning. DDUS, OMER, RMTI. You guys can look this up right now if you have an execution system. And I want to kind of give you the breakdown of how we actually go shopping for these stocks. But most importantly, how do we actually manage and know what we're doing when we're trading these stocks and making sure that we're physically prepared to get into a situation? Because remember, when it comes to trading, you got to have the mentality of getting ready to what to do, and one of the biggest mistakes that I always found, and I personally got yelled at, I mean, I live here in New York, the financial capital of the world, I was trained by the best trainers on Wall Street, and one of the things I always got banged on the head from my mentors is they always made sure I did my homework. At the end of the day and at the beginning of the day, you're always tracking your trades. Now, in the, tra in the Daily Journal, this is something that we do. But by the way, does anybody here um, track their trades and do a daily journal? I'm just out of curiosity. Anybody do that here right now? Some of you do? Always. Okay, good, good. That's, that's great to hear. So let's look at right here the stock symbol, DBUS. So let's say we trade in stock DBUS. You put it in there. Oh, almost forgot. Up here, you want to go out there and write down, you know, what's today's date, 10, um, 3, 2013, okay. And um, you want to talk about also what was your, how, when you woke up this morning, did you have a good day, did you have a bad day, you know, what, what, what is your, what actually is your, how do you feel for the day? Um, and that's something you want to add in here because, trust me, what I'm about to show you right now, you're going to realize how this is going to change your attitude when it comes to trading. Um, I had a fight with my wife. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll put that in there. Other than that, I had a great day early in the morning. So hopefully I'm not having a bad attitude going into trading because I don't want to take that anger and put it into trading. All right. So now I do my first trade. Stock symbols, uh, VVUS. By the way, did anybody hear about the stock VVUS today? Anybody, um, anybody heard about the Vinny you did? Okay. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at it, and we'll check it out. I'll bring it up a little bit later. So what you have to do, always write down how many shares you traded. Um, was it a long trade or short? Your entry of your trade. I traded this stock this morning. Um, let me bring up my execution system. Uh, what was it trading at when I bought it? VVUS. Uh, I actually had it for overnight from the day before, but we started at like $10.60. So you write down $10.60, uh, where you sold it at. Let's say ten ninety. Let's say we made three hundred dollars. The time we bought it was at nine thirty. Sold it. That's AM. And we sold it at ten ten AM. And um, any notes about it? Now this is very important. VVUS, no, VVUS is trading at $11. Look at the wrong stock. VVUS. So now what you have to do is add your notes. So basically, why did you buy this stock? Okay. Well, the reason why I bought it, there was a 100,000K buyer on ECN. Does anybody know what an ECN is? Um, the high frequency trades. Anybody know what an ECN is? NASDAQ, Archipelago. Okay, good. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm kind of taking a journal of what I'm doing, what I bought, what I sold, and then at the end of the day, I'm analyzing my trades. Right, you're basically kind of reading the tape a little bit, and that, I'm going to talk about that. Well, and I'm going to teach you how to read the tape. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the charts. I'm going to talk about the stock. But the thing that a lot of you guys have to do, the way you become a better trader in trading, the way you learn and progress is you have to build a game plan. And the daily journal is something that I know every trader in the beginning of when they start, the, the, um, and the way you manage Basically, it's like managing your money to know if you're ready to go to that next level, to go from 100 chairs to 200 chairs to 500 chairs to 1,000. To get to that level, you got to see the consistency. And as you get better at it, because I still do journals today, every day, whenever I trade, I write down on a legal pad, I write down what I have. But for some of you beginners that are just starting out, you should be managing your trades every day. Because this, because then when you go back, next week, next last month, or let's say you start graphing yourself for the year, then you can start saying, okay, how did I do in August? How did I do around this time of the year? Because sometimes some months are better than others. Uh, Gerard says, uh, can we download a trade journal template as a document? Well, Gerard, what I'll do is at the end of today's presentation, I'll give you my personal email, and everybody, I'll, I'll email everyone my journal. Now, honestly, I probably don't like, um, this is what I was trained by my, psych, uh, my, my instructors and, and psychologists. They told me they don't like using Excel spreadsheet. I don't know if you know this, but part of your brain works differently when you write things down than when you type it. So they say that your memory is a lot better when you write things down, and you're not writing a lot down. I mean, you can go to the journal and write in an Excel spreadsheet, but when you're trading, you know, what happens, and this is the other problem, then you got to get another execution, uh, another 
uh, screen. Then you got to type it in there. When you're trading, you're at war. You got to just sit there and trade. You got no time to. Okay, I bought the stock. Oh, and now let me cover it up with an Excel spreadsheet. That's not the most focused way of trading in the market. So one of the psychologies part of trading, first the most important thing is the rules, and that is a journal. Now, finding stocks, finding them is very, very easy. It really is. No exaggeration. And I'm going to go through how to find them and why we find these stocks. But finding them is not really that hard because are you still using some, some pen and paper? Yeah, you're going to have to. <laughs> Finding stocks are really not that hard. Um, the best place to find stocks to trade is in a percentage gainer and loser list. I have a question for all of you. Why, why, are you, why are all of you guys trading? What's the purpose of it? Okay, now it's pretty funny. All of you are writing the same thing, to make money. Now, do you guys care what you trade? I mean, do you care what VVUS does or um, PFTW does and SE? Do you guys really care? Or are you here to make money? And that's my point. Now, that is the next biggest mistake that a lot of traders make. They go out there and they trade stocks because they know the Apples, they know the Facebooks, they know the more the Blackberries, the Ciscos. Trading is not about what the company does. Trading is about making money. And the only way you're going to make money is finding stocks that have liquidity. Every stock trades exactly the same. The difference is some of them trade faster. Some of them cost more money, but they all have buyers and they all have sellers. They all have uh, supply and they all have demand. They all have a chart to work off. They all do the same thing. So you have to learn how to find them. And one of the best places to find them is in a, percent, a percentage gain or a loser. Now, who here has a percentage gain or a loser? Anybody have a, uh, a scanner on their execution system? Okay, good, because, and if you don't, once again, this is something I'll tell you at the end of the presentation, but this is something that you guys should be doing, looking for the scanner, making sure you have it. I, I, actually, at the end of the presentation, I'll tell you guys, if you all want to join me, um, I do a live training, um, pre-market trading every single day, and I go through the scanner and I show you which stocks are hot and which ones are not. But, once again, I can't be there every day to hold your hand. Eventually, you need to figure it out on your own, and this is one very important tool that you need when it comes to trading. Now, we talked about this stock right here. You see this big winner right here that I'm pointing out, this big gainer? VVUS. Anyone ever hear of it before? You can go to Yahoo Finance also. But I personally like it have it on your execution system so you're not opening up browsers, clicking here, typing here. Everything should be linked. All right, well, VTUS, this stock was a, at 9.30 this morning, the stock went from $2.74 to a high of $3.25 in a matter of, 15 minutes, okay? Now, if you do the math, 275 minus, let's just ballpark, 325. How much money is that, ladies and gentlemen? It's 50 cents. 50 cents on a 1,000 shares, how much money is that? $500. Now, $500 times five days a week is how much?
This is a BTUS is another stock. We didn't get to BBUS. Okay, Paul? It's 2,500 times that by 52 weeks. Exactly. That's my point, Justin. So, are you, is anybody here scared trading stocks at like $2, $5, $10? Anybody nervous about that? Because I got people that always tell me, oh, you don't trade these stocks, you can't make money. Listen, at the end of the day, I don't even care what BTUS does. If it made me, if it's going to make my $100,000 a year, <laughs> I'm not going to figure it out tomorrow. I don't care. All right? So that's the bottom, bottom line. Um, WS, no, that's not true. Okay? This stock does have a lot of volume. And any stock that I do trade would have a lot of volume. Because if it doesn't have volume, it's not going to move. Remember, you need volume to move the stock. Uh, a couple of questions coming across here a bit. I don't like to see a blank spot on the chart. Where, where do you see a blank spot? This right here is where I kind of get a little bit of a game plan of my, uh, of, of, my, of my trading. This is called pre-market. Now, pre-market is very, very important for traders because the pre-market is where a lot of the action happens. Now, I start, I do my, um, my live trading morning meetings at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 30 minutes before the market opens up. Now, a lot of the percentage gainers and losers and a lot of the volume trackers are, are starting to kick in at 7 a.m. So I kind of have a little bit of a good understanding of what stocks are moving and what stocks aren't moving. So pre-market trading is very, very important when it comes to trading, specifically as a day trader. Because if you're day trading, you don't want to lose this run because it only happens in a short period of time. So the way you know that's going to happen is to see what's happening in the pre-market. Once again, where do we find it? Back here as the biggest percentage gainer of the market. Okay? Uh, is it optionable? It's a $2 stock. You really have to do an option on it? I think it could be. It could be. But why not? So when it comes to trading, I actually did the Trader's Journal. Um, when it comes to trading, one of the things that I, I like to teach my students, and hopefully I'll get the opportunity to teach all of you too, um, you know, in an all-day event during the market hours, but when it comes to trading, what I like to teach my students what to do is when you come in the morning, we go through the list, we see what's moving from the night before, and from doing that, then we actually go out there, get our Trader's Journal, write down what we're looking to do, who we're looking to trade, what is our attitude for the day, and just try to make a day's pay. That's it. Um, you know what, that... You know, I, I'm actually very curious to that question, uh, WS. I don't know who your name is, but I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you the W Hotel. All right. Um, why would somebody say? Why would somebody say don't trade stocks under five dollars? What's the reason for that? What's wrong with stocks under five dollars? Serious Radio is under five dollars. Bank of America was under. Citibank was under five dollars. Uh, because institution investors are not in it, okay? They're afraid to pump and dump. I don't know, is, is Sirius Radio a pump and dump? You can't short it. That's a good point, okay? Liquidity. All right. Well, if, if liquidity is an issue, I mean, what do you think is, what do you, what do you guys think is good liquidity for a stock? What should be like a normal, what do you think normal liquidity should be for a stock? A million a day, 10 million, 500,000, about 200,000 a day, 500, a million. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do a, 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 a screen share. Hold on, let me see if I can do, um, 
I don't know if it's going to work, but let me see if I can share my, uh, see if I can share this. Hopefully it doesn't crash. <laughs> All right, can everyone see this okay? Just give me a chat back if you guys can see my screen. Okay, good. All right, so anyway, here's a stock. Stock symbol Z, G, and X. All right, here's a stock that was at $1.80, and it traded 3.7 million shares, and you can see what the 25 cents to 264. I mean, it's got the volume. Um, let me see if I find another one for you. Very inexpensive stock. That had some good move. Uh, what else do we look at? Here's another one. Colorado uh, Biosciences. Half a million shares. Stock went from seven to eight. Uh, what else did we look at? That was nice. Here, how about this one? This one actually is something that I probably would recommend watching tomorrow morning. IDRA. Anybody hear about this stock? IDRA? Up 29%. Right here in the morning, the stock went from $2 to $2.30 in a matter of 30 minutes. And then at the last 30 minutes of the close, it went from $2.25 to $2.55. So you're talking about another $250 on a 1,000 shares, which I don't know too many people that make $250 in 30 minutes. But it traded 5 million shares, 29, uh, 29% on the day. It was the biggest percentage gainer of the day. So the thing is, don't misconstrue or look at inexpensive stocks that you can't make money because some of them really do do move. All right? Uh, let me stop that. All right, let's go back to our slideshow. Can you guys see the slideshow okay? Okay, good. All right, so let, let me move on and talk about a um, little bit more of the psychology and the discipline. You know, the thing that I want all of you guys to remember that trading, trading stocks you know, is a job. It's not investing. So keep that in mind that if you're if you're getting and looking at a stock, because I know you love companies. I, I know you might love Facebook, and I know you might like Tesla, and I love them too. But the thing is, this is not investing. You're out there to buy a stock and make money with it. And you have to treat it like a job. You know, it's like, um, you know, it's like being a builder. You know, you're going out there and you want to be a builder and, you know, but you, you can't be like, you can't be one side and say, oh, no, no, I only work on million-dollar homes. But you know what? We had, a, we had a hurricane here, Hurricane Sandy. You know, contractors are drooling out of their mouth how much money they made here. Unfortunately, I was affected by it, and a lot of my friends lost their homes. But if you come by to New York again, you'd be, like, amazed. So, like, my God, they built this place up. All that damage was they already fixed it. They had it fixed in six months. Now, if you were in the in the contract business and were one side and like, no, 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 I don't do that kind of work, you just probably threw away probably the most amount of money you can make ever. My point is the same thing about trading. You can't look at and be one sided with certain stocks, and that's why you don't treat it like an investment. You look at it as an opportunity. And here are the couple of things I'm showing here. When you treat it like a job, you keep a diary of what you've done and trade in a way that makes you feel comfortable. Now, when it comes to a diary, you know, like I just mentioned, as you keep a diary of what you're doing, this is going to help you understand where you're making your money, where you're losing your money, what things are hot, what things are not. Do you know that like Mondays and Fridays are one of the worst days to trade. Does anybody know why? Anybody know why Mondays and Wednesdays? Psychology? No, almost. 
because you're coming back from a weekend. What, what's going on Saturday and Sunday? Most companies are closed. No one's coming out with news. And who wants to trade on Friday? Exactly, Jeff. It's poor liquidity. How many, how many, how many stock splits do you hear, or, or how many, hear, how many of you hear um, so, uh, options expiring on a Monday? You know, or how many people, how many companies want to come out with news going into the weekend? Not very many. How many earnings announcements do you hear coming out on a Monday and a Friday? Not many. Most of the action happens on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, how do I know that? You keep a diary. You're gonna, if you start seeing it, you're going to start realizing it. But trade in a way that makes you feel comfortable. Do you, does anyone here, you ever do a trade and it's just like you can't comprehend what's going on? The thing is moving so quickly and you're like, my God, what do I do? Do I get in? Do I get out? That is another big failure rate of trading. That means that you're looking at stocks that are out of your league. If you can't see what the buyers and sellers are doing, if you can't see high-frequency trades, you're obviously you're in a position that eventually is going to really, really hurt you. And if you make money, that's lucky. And you're not in the luck business. You're in the trading business. Now, stocks also can... Um, Stocks also can obviously make you lose your temper. <laughs> and, you know, one thing you really want to do, and this all has to do with psychology, you don't want to, don't get, don't get emotional. When I train my students and we're in a position and I take a loss, I don't take it personal. Once I know I'm taking it personal, you know what? I'm going to get back into a trade. I'm going to try to get even. I'm going to try to make my money back. Don't do that. It's, it, it, once you start losing your cool, you're going to get yourself in bigger trouble than what you want to. Must be focused at all times. And being focused is knowing who the buyers are, knowing who the sellers are, knowing the support, knowing the resistance. And also, when you're trading, this is another big mistake I see people do. They go out there and they start paper trading. In a, in a way of, not in a bad way, but they don't paper trade. They go out there want to open a brokerage account. They want to start trading, and they want to start learning later. How many of you here, let's be honest, how many of you here started trading without before getting educated? Anyone? And how much money did that cost you in losses? Do you ever go into a trade and wonder, like, sometimes somebody's watching you? It's like every time you buy it, the thing goes down. Every time you sell it, it goes up. It's not your fault. It's just that no one taught you what you're looking at. Thousands of times, a zillion times, right? I know. I've been there. I've done that. Okay, this is why I love teaching. This is why I've been teaching for over 20 years. This is why Steve Bigelow teaches. We see people like you all the time, but we are, we are, we were failures too. You know, we were some of those self-taught people. Until we realize, be like, what am I doing wrong? Trading, ladies and gentlemen, is the best job in the world. And I, I tell people that all the time. And this is how I could prove it. You are your own boss. You could do it anywhere in the world. You could do it in your pajamas. Um, why give it to a mutual fund? You could do it yourself. How many of you are semi-retired or retired and, you know, just want to start trading your IRA? You can do that now. You have great technology today that everything that you're doing, but somebody has to mentor you and teach you. There you go. He's doing it from New Mexico. All right? So these are the things that you have to look at, but you have to be patient. The cheapest trade you're going to make is getting educated, putting the time away, and learning. And one of the big mistakes that I see people make is they don't paper trade. And that's practicing with the execution system. Let me tell you, if you can't make money in paper trading, <laughs> there is no way you're going to make money with real money. I know this is very difficult to do, but part of the psychology of trading is not getting caught up and being disciplined. So... One thing I always try to teach my students is start out with 100 shares, small lots of stock. Learn how to go out there 
And listen, if you can't make money with 100 shares, you'll never make money with 1,000 shares. And, and part of the journal, just to let you know, is the whole part of the journal is to see if you're consistent. It's like batting practice. You keep hitting. Because let me tell you, to go from 100 shares to trade 500 shares to 1,000 is very, very difficult. Do you guys ever go out there and get, like, partial tickets? Do you ever get, like, get, like 100 shares, 300 shares, do a trade, and be like, why do you get all these partial tickets? Why all of a sudden, and then you get them at different prices? Well, this is where the education comes in. This is why you have to start working with small shares and work your way through it. Now, has anyone ever heard of the phrase trader's block? Anyone here a trader's block? Anybody know what that is? Trader's block? Some of you have? Okay. Trader's block, what that is, means that you know how to trade, you want to trade. It's like writer's block. Very good, Michael. Same thing. You, you're, afraid to do, you're afraid to do the trade. Okay? You're afraid you know, over analyzing, Roger. Very good. You can't pull the trigger. That's called trader's block. And, I, and this is one of the hardest things also to hurdle as a trader. But this is how you do this. This is how you beat trader's block. You start out with small shares. Okay, don't worry about the ticket charges. Don't worry about anything. You start out, if, you, if you're afraid to do 100 shares, trade one share. One stinking share of the stock. Get in there and know what it's like in the game. Write it down on your journal. Build that consistency. Because let me tell you, as a trader, I make sure that my traders do a minimum of five trades a day. If you can't trade, you're never going to learn. You know, it's like baseball. You know, you go out there and you think you're going to play for the big game, right? You know what? If you didn't go to batting practice and, and had a 1,000 balls thrown to you, you're never going to hit the home run. You're here to make money. You're doing this. You don't, I don't know if you guys realize this, but you are an athlete, okay? You, you're an athlete in trading. And to be a good athlete in trading, you need a lot of practice. And you've got to be in the game. You need to know what it's like to be in a trade. So if you're afraid to trade, the best thing to do is bring up less shares, trade less shares. Thank you very much, uh, Dune. Uh, a couple of questions, uh, Faust, does volatility have something to do also? Well, we didn't get to that yet, but volatility does have a lot to do with it, and it's part of scanning the market. You know, when I go out there and I do my, when I run my professional trading room, we, volatility has a lot to do with it. A lot of pre-market trading, see if the stocks are moving, absolutely. All right, uh, Mira says, uh, Feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah, I know, Mira, and that's the best thing to do it. You got that fear in you? Just just get out of it. You know what? Just do one do one share, two chairs, you know? Don't worry about the thousand chairs. I tell my students all the time, don't do this to make money. Do it to have fun. The money will come later, okay? Have fun trading. It's a lot of fun. Get into positions. You know, know what it's like to be in the game. Have some Something to talk about that you were in some of these stocks that we were trading. Today. You know the the DR when they, when, they have, when you see Kramer on TV talking about a stock and like oh yeah I was in that stock today that's so great you have something to share. When you can't share something if you said oh yeah I saw that stock and I missed it because when big catastrophes happen or great opportunities. You don't want to have that trader's block. Uh, Marty says, largest uh, percentage gainers and largest percent pre-market, uh, large pre market Well, you know, Marty, what happened today is not indicative of what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow is a totally different day. So even though you might look at some stocks and you see that they have movement today, it doesn't mean they're going to move tomorrow. Uh, let me just change the slide here. So anyway, um, 
And, it, you know, like I said, we, we have about 20 minutes, and I got, oh, my God, about slide number 12. <laughs> okay, let me try to move through this a little quickly, and because uh, I want to get into some of the good stuff, too. You know, here I am trying to tell you a little bit more about this discipline and psychology, and most importantly, responsibilities, but I also want to kind of teach you guys a little bit more of some strategies, all right? Analyzing your trades. And this is, you know, I guess to answer one of your questions here, um, uh, Marty, you know, I guess this would answer your question. The only thing I do in the afternoon that I train my students is to analyze your trades. Why did you make money in this trade? Why did it go up? Why did it go down? Was it at support levels? Was it at resistance levels? You know, losing money is not a bad thing. Losing money, personally, I think is a good thing. You know why? Because if you know why you lose it, you're never going to do it again. If you're afraid to lose money, you're in the wrong business. Do you know a baseball player, if he's batting, his batting average is 300, he's an all-star. Do you know he strikes out 700% of the time? So don't be afraid to lose. What you have to learn is how to control losses and maximize those gains. Because you're going to make mistakes. The faster you make them, the faster you're going to learn. Because, you know, there is a failure rate, you know, in trading. It's part of it. And that's right, Judy. Good education is for future gains. You know, how many of you here own your own business? You, you can't tell me that every decision you made was the right one. And you know what? When you made a bad deal, you sure learn from that deal. How many of you here wish you could pass on that knowledge to your children? And says, you know what, I'm getting my son into the business. I really hope he's going to do the right thing and, and doesn't get caught up in that. But sometimes you got to put training wheels on them. Sometimes you got to let them fall on their face. Well, guess what? I look at a lot of you as my children because that's why I love teaching. Because I, I've been there. I've done that. I know what you guys are going to go through. And I know that you, you're going to need to make these mistakes, but if you follow the rules and psychologically, if you prepare yourself to trade specifically at the most volatile times of the market, you'll do very, you'll do very well. Um, your son's very stubborn. Well, I got three of them myself, and, and I'm telling you, and I got little ones, and I totally understand what you're saying. You know, but guess what? You think children are stubborn? Try to, try, to, try to teach an old dog new tricks. And guess who's the old dog? You are. You know, in a way of like, eh, you know, maybe I'll have to listen to this person. Maybe I'll do it myself. How many of you here actually really went through a, a full-blown training program before you actually went out there? Or did you actually go out there and trade first? You know, because I know I did it. <laughs> I made that dumb mistake. It cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars in losses, but I made it all back. You know, so, you know, and sometimes going out there and trading first, you kind of realize, my God, and what am I doing? You know, it's so much cheaper to sit here and learn from true professionals that are going to guide you. You know, like I said, you know what, I always use this, I always use this metaphor. I tell people, you no, know, once again, about the diet. I mean, listen, we all could, we all diet, we all could lose some extra pounds. You want the real recipe to lose weight? The real true recipe? Go out there, go pay for a nutritionist, and go pay for a personal trainer to come and beat you over the head to get you in the gym and work with you every day. All right? I, you know what, Dolores? Don't eat. I know that's the hardest thing. We love food. There's no way of getting around it. Have some guy, hire somebody that's going to train you. And guess what? That same, that same attitude, the same strategy, is what you need to do for trading in the market. You all want to trade the market. You all want to make money in the market. You all have the money to trade the market, but you need a coach that's, that could teach you how to do it. Because this is not a one-night thing. This is a lifetime commitment. And let me tell you, it's the best, the best, best job in the world. Alan, you're a personal trainer, so once again, I don't, have, I don't have to preach. I don't have to preach to you. You know exactly what I what exactly what I mean. Um, 
Michael says, Fausto diet had uh, made me and my wife get to where we have never been. So was that cool about really helping us? Well, you, well that, listen, that's, and, and it's, it's great. I train a lot of husband and wife, same thing. It's a great combination. You guys work together like a team. Now, let's get talking about, you know, I want to get into high-frequency trades. Does anybody know what high-frequency trades are? Any of you guys know what, um, you know, all these hidden orders, dark pools are? Anybody know what those are? Just give me a quick yes or no. And HFTs. Okay. For some of you who don't know this, but 70% of the volume is traded by high-frequency trades. Okay? So think about it. If you had a niche to watch and monitor 70% of the orders out there, how valuable is that to you in every, or one of your trades? I mean, think about it. You could see every 70% of the orders out there. How would that help you in your trading? I know it's a dumb question, right? Substantially. This is what my mentors taught me. This is Fausto. You're trading in the market, right? This is when I first got started. It says, Fausto, you're trading in the market. Who would you rather watch, okay? The guy talking on CNBC or the guy that owns 70% of the volume? I says, obviously, you got the 70% of the volume. He says, great, sit down. I'm going to show you how they do it. Now, what we're about to show you is not the Fausto Puglisi method, the Cyber Trade University method. This is how Wall Street trades. It's called, when I used to do it, they used to call it, this used to be called the instant, instant, instant machine, which is where the institutions trade. Now they call them ECNs, electronic communication network, the high frequency trades. Now, when it comes to trading, I have a question for all of you. And, and we said this before. How do stocks go up and down in the market, everyone? How do the stocks go up and down? What drives things up or down? You should all be able to answer this question. Buyers and sellers, supply and demand, right? Everyone, try S&D. Everyone, everyone, right? S&D. I want to get you in the mood of what it's like to be. you got to be involved because the only way you're going to learn how to trade, this is how you get the traders block out, not being afraid to talk, okay? S&D. All right, now what you're looking on over here, what you're looking at right here is a ECN book from NASDAQ. These are the buyers. These are the sellers. Now, do you guys notice with, with the prices and the size, size of the amount of shares, what stands out on the bid side? Are you guys noticing anything unusual on the bid side? What would you look at if you were looking at the bid? What would be the first thing? Yeah, the big block orders. All right, you got, what, a 14,800 share buyer out there. And on the sell side, what do you notice? Where's the biggest seller out there? At what price? That's right, 3600 Now, for some of you that mention it, I get people say this all the time. They say, oh, they could pull the order, and this and that. First of all, that order is being aggregated. Okay, that's just not one person. That could be 50 people, okay? But think about this for a second, and I know that Steve Bidlow talks about it all the time. You know, and all chart guys talk about it. What makes support and resistance levels on a chart? Everyone, what makes support and resistance levels end, right? Price, supply and demand. Well, those supply and demand are orders, okay? And how do stocks break support and resistance levels? Because the buyer that was there previously is probably not there now. So when you're out there trading, and you're seeing these support resistance levels and having that game plan, well, think about it. The chart doesn't tell you the orders, okay? These orders tell you if those guys are out there still bidding for it. Trust me, it's as simple as that. 
So let me give you another example. Here's a chart. All right, here's a resistance. Here's a support. I'm going to draw a little line over here. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Now, what makes these supports and resistance levels? Why is it better than uh, level two? What, level three? Because it gives you 20 times more data. That's why. Level two, uh, Marshall, they're getting rid of it. Um, I already spoke, spoke to NASDAQ. I met with them a few times. And, um, you know, with today's technology, level two really doesn't work. You know, market makers are not advertising their prices anymore like they used to on level two. So now everything's going to total view. But looking at over here, you see right there those buyers and sellers? That buyer is made by this 6,000 share. I mean, that resistance is made by that 6,000 share seller. This support level here, here, and here, those bottom bars, remember, what's the bottom of a bar? That's the low of the day, right? That was made by this 10,000 share buyer. Okay, so if you see the stock coming down, the thing that you always learn in chart 101 is you look for support resistance levels. So the problem with support resistance levels is you got to confirm and make sure that how do you know it's not going to break it? Well, you have to look for those orders. So I have a question for all of you. Anyone here using the total view, the level three? Any of you out there using and seeing these orders out there? See that? Not that many of you. Not that many of you at all. Well, Marshall, I'm going to teach you how to get that at the end of the presentation. So, <laughs> Once again, this is not Fausto's software. This is not a Fausto Anachi. This is the actual data from the exchanges, okay? All right. So anyway, um, do I have any more? Okay, yeah, I do. Okay. So at the end of the presentation, I'll tell everyone how to get it, but I want you to stick around to the end, and I'll tell you what it is and where about it. But one thing I was always taught by my mentors, this is Fausto. I know you, you want to trade and everything, and, and everyone has its great style, but it's not going to hurt you to, to confirm that those support resistance levels on the chart are going to have those orders out there. You need those orders. You need that volume. Oh, well, I am, Fred, I am considering volume. Volume is there. I look at average volume over the day. Okay? But these, when you look at these big lines uh, on the bottom, these volume bars, these volume bars are built by these big orders. And you know what? If those orders ain't there, you're not going to see those bars out there. So you're kind of like one step ahead of everyone else, if you follow what I'm saying. Now, what I'm going to do also, if anybody um, is interested, I, I can email you all another article on dark pools. You know, everybody um, makes such a big deal about and they get so scared. They're like, ooh, like high-frequency trades. and Ooh, look, you got to be careful of the dark pools. I'm like, you know what? I've written articles about it. These actually, yeah, they're bad for people that don't know what they are, but they're actually an incentive for you and me because there's nothing to worry about when it comes to this stuff. People make it a lot worse than what it really is because you know why? Nobody even knows what it is. And you know the only people know who it is? Traders. You guys ever watch CNBC? You ever watch the financial station? You ever see when they talk about, you ever see when they have the, uh, they talk to the traders on the floor? You see that when you see like the booths and all those big monitors? You guys ever noticed that? Do you know what those big monitors are showing? Take a guess. What are those monitors up there? What do you think they're doing? Those are orders, Deborah. That's right. Who are the best traders on Wall Street? Who are the guys that you would you idolize if you wanted to be somebody doing a career in this? A floor trader, right. So would it be nice to be to have the same tools that they have? Well, you can. So if you want to learn more about it, take my email address. I'll, read, I'll email you an article. 
and go from there, okay? So, let's talk about charts. Now, you know, there's so many ways of reading charts, but, you know, one thing you got to always keep in mind, try to keep things a little simple. Don't get too crazy with these charts because what ends up happening is you start building something like my four-year-old school project up on the top. So I have something called the KISS method. Just keep it simple. Try not to get too overwhelmed with too many indicators and too much stuff out there because you'll end up making things where you could see that the support levels is here, and when you start adding all this, you know, you end up getting lost, all right? So just always keep on keep on that. Yeah, candlesticks are great. I mean, listen, it tells you the high and low of the day. There's a consistency there. But what happens is people start adding Bollinger Bands and MACDs and stochastics and pivot points and moving averages. It ends up being a big mess, you know. And, and you know what? I can't believe that people actually read this stuff. But you know what the problem when you start implementing all these indicators? Then it ends up slowing you down and your traders block. It's a lot worse than where you're already at. All right, so a couple of things here. Almost done. Um, for some of you who don't know, this Cyber Training University was ranked number one school by Equities Magazine six years in a row. I'm always proud to say that because you know the people that work at Cyber Training University, we are traders, we're market makers. So if you want to learn from a trader, you know that's what we do at Cyber Training University. Thank you very, thank you very much, Pete. Um, with that said, let me talk about some stocks that we traded today. Okay. Did anyone hear about this stock, O-M-E-R? Anyone hear about this one? Evan, you did? It moved yesterday also. Here's a stock, and I know this is kind of hard to read, and I apologize for it, but here's a stock of $2, $13 stock, okay? Right here in the open, you can see how the stock made a big move. And right here, it made another big move, right there at the open. And you could see here, in the last couple of days, less than one month, the stock went from $5 all the way to 13 literally almost 300%. Now, this is a stock that we've, I've been training uh, for the last couple of days, but it's been on a really big fire. So what I recommend you guys to do is keep an eye on OMER tomorrow morning. Okay, because it's been on a big, big move trading. So the thing is, is that I don't know what OMER does. I really don't care what OMER. But if you look at the big percentage in gainers, it was the fourth biggest gainer of the day. Which, which was the number one big gainer of the day? You guys remember? Because I told you to watch this one too tomorrow. I D. I mean I D R A. That's right. But for some of you, it's not in your lead because it's under five dollars. <laughs> okay. But but when this goes from two to seven and you're up about four hundred percent, then you're like, well, why didn't I find that early when Fausto was talking about it? You know what I mean? Don't underestimate these stocks. That's my point. Now another thing I want to bring up is timing. You know, this is why I love teaching. Okay? VDUS. VDUS Here's a two-day chart, and do you notice where the biggest moves are? Do you notice where the big moves are, um, like when you're seeing the big trends of the, of the stock? When did, what times is, is it making exactly, right at the open? So look at this, what happened yesterday. This stock had a big move right at the open. Um, I think it ran from 8 to 10 in a matter of an hour. My God, 8 to 10? That's $2. That's a 20% move. Can you imagine making, people can't make 5% a year on their money. Here you are looking at a stock up 20% on the day. Okay? Then, it had another big move right today, right at the open. Look it up on your chart. Do you know, if you could just make, if you only got 20, 30% of that move, made yourself 200, 500, what's wrong with that? Why sit there and kill yourself over the course of the day? Right? Well, this is why I teach. I know this might sound crazy, but this is the truth. I started trading when I was 22 years old. I was semi-retired at 24. 
And the reason why is after more than two years of training, I was only training an hour a day. Uh, my mentor has always taught me, he says, Fausto, this is not a full-time job, so you got to do something else. I'm like, how is that possible? Because the, tr- the stock's trading in waves. There's only the, – the stock market moves at certain times during the day. And after that, there's nothing else to do. All you can do is ring up ticket charges, and that's it. I mean, even as a swing trader, does a swing trader require you to be there all day? You know, that's the way you have to look at it. Um, who taught me? I was trained by some of the best traders. I was trained from guys from Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch. I lived here in New York, and, I would, you know, being living in New York, you know, it's the financial capital of the world. So I was trained by a lot of great guys, uh, James Pelizzi. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't know them anyway, Frank Ferraros. Guys you probably will never know who they are because they're not traders. I mean, trainers. They're, they're traders. A um, couple of things I heard a... Uh, I heard a, a lot of times, do not let winners become losers. Um, what does exactly that mean? Well, what that means is you don't go broke taking a profit. If you made your day's pay, just take it. Don't go out there and try to be a, be greedy and try to keep making more. That's a mistake. You know, that's the way you look at it. So if you make your money, listen, wouldn't you love to make $2,000 a day? Of course you would. Some of you are like, hell, if I can make $100 a day, I'll be happy. Well, if you made your day's goal, why do you got to sit there and keep making more? Because what happens if you give that back? There's no guarantee it's going to go higher. That's the way it looks like. So, exactly, Michael, you got me, you know, that's basically uh, one of my slogans that I always tell my students. It's actually the bulls and the bears eat and the pigs get slaughtered. <laughs> All right, one last stock I want to show you guys, RMTI. Did you guys see about this one? Here's another cheap stock that went all the way up to 12. From September, it started at 5. The thing's already at 13. Look what happened right here at the, uh, right at the close. Right at 2, um, no, actually right here. Actually, I do a presentation at 2.30 in my chat room, and I was talking about at 2.30. And right here at $12 and 10 cents, in less than an hour, it ran all the way to 1245. I mean, is 35 cents going to kill you on a thousand shares, twelve thousand dollar investment? You made yourself three hundred and fifty dollars. Not bad for a day's pay. And on a swing trade, look how it worked on a swing trade. So these are the things that you have to learn. What about RNA? You made twenty. Oh, that's Mike. You remember that RNA? Anyone hear about RNA? RNA was a $25 stock, okay? $25. Overnight, the stock went from $25 to $5. Could you imagine down 75%? What would you guys do right now? If you saw that stock, yeah, RNA, you could check it out on your screen. What would you do, go long or short on a position like that? You wake up in the morning and you see a stock like this. How would you trade it, guys? What would, be, what, what would you think, what would you do? Short, short, short. Some of you are saying long. Buy it if it bounced. Well, Deborah, that's exactly what it did. Uh, I guess all the people were averaging down, crying, and they averaged down, and the stock went from, uh, I think it went from 5 to 7 in about 20 minutes. $2 in 20 minutes. Could you imagine? A five thousand dollar investment. So, you know, what does RNA do? I really, I know what it does. I really don't care. It doesn't matter. They lost their phase three trial on their drug. You know what? Unfortunately, someone's catastrophe was Fausto's opportunity, and it's your opportunity. So that's the way you have to look at it. This is a job. You have to treat it like a job, and psychologically, you got to prepare yourself. To make this, you know, that, you know, make it like a job. Don't take these stocks personally because you're not going to win. All right, so now what I'd like to do, everyone, um, if some of you here want to watch me trade live in the morning um, and you want to get my stock picks 
and you want to see what it's like to be in a real trading community, um, I actually and, and know about level three and how it works and all that. I came out with a package that I never offered before. Okay, it's called Take Five. And what that means is for five days, for five dollars, give me five days. That's all I want. Five days of your time for five bucks. I want you to, I want, I want you to, I want you to pay me a dollar a day to work for you and show you how you can meet, um, my friend Daryl or any of my students. He just actually sent to me this uh, a couple of days ago. He says, Fausto, uh, this, um, here, and this is his comment. You'll see these traders in my room. Now, so, uh, this is my, this is day nine in my, ch- in the chat room. I've made just under $15,000. I think I like the arrangement here. It's from Canada. So, for five dollars, for five days, let me show you how I'll trade with you and make money. And this is what it comes with. We have a couple of things that we do. It's just not the trading room that we do. We also do a text alert and a Twitter alert. So what it is is that when you're in our trading room um, and you can't be there all day, we run like an online webinar. If you can't be there all day, great, no problem. We'll, you'll get a text message immediately. You'll get, a, you know, you'll get a Twitter if you're on Twitter. So we implemented two other new programs to it, so it's great. Now, if you guys want to register for it, for the um, – for the take five, I'll just give you the link right here so you guys can register for it. Oh, I'm getting all these. Uh, there we go. Um, here's the link if you guys want to register for the uh, the take five. I don't know if you guys can see that. Once again, for five bucks, give me five days. You'll start tomorrow, and you'll decide by next Friday – if, uh, if we're there, if, if it's worth your time. Uh, any other questions? Cyber Group is the best thing that could ever happen to me. Well, Michael, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Gilly Fassel, can we use your system without Total View? Yes, you can, Gilly. You really could. But Total View only costs you $15 or so a month. Why not see those 70% of those orders? Uh, what are the prices after the five days? Well, it ranges. It, it runs from $47 to, to $197. So you have a decision of what, uh, what package you want. But take a shot. And actually, I'll even make a commitment to you, all of you. How about this? I guarantee if you're not satisfied, I'll, after Friday, next Friday, I'll give you money back if you're not happy. How about that? That's how confident that I can guarantee you're going to make money in the trading room and see it. Um, what time in the rooms open? The room opens at 8 a.m. in the morning. We run from 8 to 5. We run a morning meeting from 9 o'clock that does pre-market trading, and then we run a for 30 minutes, and then we run another meeting at 2:30 uh, to, to to trade what we're going to trade going into the close. And once again, it's a um, I'm in the room trading all day. Uh, it doesn't, you know, the, uh, the software we use, you mean like the webinar technology? We use WebEx. Uh, a couple, wow, a lot of great questions coming across here. Is that, yes, that's 8 a.m. Eastern time, Ken. Because you know what, Ken, a lot of the pre-market, a lot of the trades we do are in the pre-market. You're going to see all the orders. This is what prepares you in the morning. Uh, Todd, that's great. We also teach Forex, and you know what? We actually have a grant um, for someone, uh, if you want to get, we have a great Forex program where we have a brokerage firm that pays for your Forex uh, course in, in, in full. So if you want to learn more about that, send me an email and I'll let you know. Uh, Joseph, that's great. That, that, uh, you know what, I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, his work schedule is a conflict. That's why we do the Twitter and text messaging. Okay, with that. So if you can't be there, at least you'll get some of that. Thank God, there's so many questions coming across here. I Listen, I really apologize. There's over close to 500 people here, and I'm trying to answer them as fast as I can. Uh, what is the cost after that? Um, what, the cost after that 
is forty-seven dollars to one ninety-seven, depending on which plan. There's like three plans you could pick from. Okay. Do you teach futures? Uh, me personally, no. I, I specifically trade stocks. Yes, a month. But you know, once again, it's part of doing business like anything else. And once again. For five dollars, be it for five days, you try it out. If you don't like it, you get your money back. What are the percentage of day traders? Uh, well, most traders on Wall Street are day traders, by the way. Yes, Edward. Oh, and that's another thing, Edward. Thanks, for, thanks for just reminding me. The meetings, the morning meetings, they're recorded, so if you can't make it, and you wanted to listen, what happened? We send you the link for the recording. And, we're really, you know, the, the meetings, we try to keep them short, a little more than 15 to 20 minutes, so you get that also. Um, how do you get it, Vince? You go to the NASDAQ website. Right on NASDAQ, you could purchase TotalView, but the best place to get it is from your brokerage firm directly because you want to have it under one execution system. Um my opinion on options, listen, you want to trade options, first thing you need to know what to do is you've got to learn how to trade stocks. Because remember, it's the movement of the stock that makes the option move. So, you know, that's another big mistake that people make. You've got to learn how these stocks move because that puts you one step ahead of everyone else when the option does move. Um, are the hours five for five in the market? No, no, no. It's it's five days for five dollars. So you're paying a dollar a day to be in the trading room. That's what that is. And it runs from eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at night. The most volatile times of the market. Um, how are the different rules to trade in pre market? Well Tammy, that that's that's an excellent question. Well, you get to see what's going on in the high frequency trades. We're shopping for stocks, and also, you know, you have to remember, there's a lot of orders that are going in from Europe and right now, and a lot of the brokerage firms make their money in the pre-market because people put orders out there um, before the market opens up. So they see all these orders are coming in, so they're preparing to trade against these orders. Do you ever do an order and find out you get executed like 10 minutes later and wonder, like, how did all that happen? Because they see your order and they're trying to buy it, and they do a lot of that in the pre-market. Um, yes, Frank, once you sign up on the website, it's going to, you know, you'll have a dashboard. Let me just bring it up for you. Once you um, sign up, you'll have, like, um, a dashboard that's going to put you right here, right in the room. Okay? So you get to click in the morning, meeting, everything. Right, actually, this is a screenshot of our host, our website, of our homepage, of our website. Uh, you'll see a flashing banner. You can also access it right there. Uh, do I hold positions overnight? Very, very rarely. I like to sleep at night. <laughs> I don't like. I don't like to have any of those things overnight. It gives me a. Uh, when I like to sleep, when I, when, you know, I listen. I traded R and A. And when you see, could you imagine having a stock at $24 and waking up the next morning at 5? I've been there. I've done that with so many of these stocks. It's not worth it. You can always buy it back tomorrow. You know what? You have to kind of make sure it's being done into design. Do I trade every day, Frank? Not every day. You don't have to trade every day. I only trade the most volatile times, the first hour and the last hour. Do we share personal information? No, I don't, I don't share my personal information. <laughs> does all of you show you volume on the Forex? No, it doesn't. Gerard, it only works specifically on equities. Uh, no, Alan, this is the first time we're doing it, um, and this is only an exclusive event. I don't want to sound like a salesman, but <laughs> we only did this for Candlestick Forum. You know, we wanted to give something, we wanted to give you guys a good, um, a good deal is the first time we ever offered it, and it's um, and it's only going to be it's, it starts tomorrow. Your subscription, 
and it's going to end next Friday. Well, it, I apologize, okay? It's, I know this has been recorded, and some people can't get to it, but when you start, when you start your subscription, um, when you start it, that's when it kicks in. So, you know, um, so if you register tomorrow, you know, like I said, it's gonna, it's gonna kick into tomorrow. If you do it on Monday, you'll have to follow Monday. Pat, well, great, oh, great, I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Listen, Pat, let me tell you, and everyone else that joins, you're gonna see things that you're gonna blow your mind because a lot of the action that we trade is in the morning. Like I told you, I was semi-retired, you know, because I was only trading an hour a day. And then you can do your swing trades, and you can watch Steve Bigelow and, and go into his trading room, and then do that, and then do your swing trades or your short-term investing, whatever it is. But if you want to make that two hundred, five hundred dollar a day trader, make that extra fifty, hundred thousand dollars, let me tell you, it's not that hard. But you need a team, you need a, you need someone to work with, you need someone to coach you through it. And you'll see what it's like to be part of it. And if you can't be there all day, well, no problem. You'll get the text message. You'll get the Twitter message. And then you can go back to your dashboard. It's recorded. You can see what you missed. Works out great. Are you trades live on the screen? Yes. Steve, ask Steve. I am a 12-time champion. I beat every school. One of the reasons why people like taking my course that I trained is because even my, my course that I trained, they're all live trades. I actually show you, put my money where my mouth is, and show you how to control losses. That's what you're going to learn. You have to learn when people are doing it. You know, it's all pretty and nice when you see it on a nice little, um, on a nice PowerPoint, but it doesn't predicate that you're going to be successful in the real markets. Uh, Watson, how do you get level three? Well, I told you, you go to the NASDAQ website, look up Total View, and you could purchase it there. Or the better place to get it is with your brokerage firm. Losses, Jimmy said, please talk about losses. Well, Jim, losses, you know, the way I look at a loss, Jim, is that if you're looking to make $200 a day, you're going to lose 400 tomorrow. So the way you control losses is... You look at how much money you want to make a year, okay? You divide it by per day. So if you're looking to make 50000 a year, you're looking to basically make $200 a day. So where you control losses, you don't lose more than 200 a day. That's how you control things. Um, how much is my cost of my course? Well, you can visit our website. You can look on the courses. It depends on which one you want. You know, I mean, there's a full platinum class. There's a, you know, there's a smaller class. There's workshops. But you know what? Before you guys look into doing crazy things like that, just come and join me really realistically for five days. Let me show you I can change your life, you know, on seeing stocks like I traded today, like the RNAs or or the VVUSs, all this good stuff. The order says, WS, listen, they're saying it, I'm telling you this, if you are not satisfied, okay, you let me know, and I'll give you money back. If I can't show you that I make money in five days, just call me up and you let me know, and I'll give you a refund, okay? And you, you have this recording to use it against me. Um, how much money you need for a minimum account? You don't need a lot. You really don't. People have this, this perception that you need a lot of money to trade. You don't need a lot of money to trade. You see some of the stocks that we traded, $5, $10. You don't need a lot. How many monitors I use, Mike? You know what, Mike? You know, uh, is anybody familiar with Tom, uh, Tom Sosnoff? From Think or Swim, it's a good friend of mine. I'm actually going to be doing a speaking there in, in December. Okay, um, he always taught me and says, "Fausto, if you can't make money with one monitor, you're not going to make money with six. So I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, I'm missing some of you guys' questions, but um, do we need to download the software for five days or we just sign up monthly? No, you don't have to download anything. It, it, this, this automatically is going to launch your browser immediately to get into the room. You're not going to need any software or anything. You know, if you need a, a trading platform, if you want to follow along, just go to Trading Tools, and you can get a demo with a couple of companies that we do offer. So if you want to have a trading system, it's a good place where to find one. How many, usually, how many white shares I usually trade? I usually specifically trade 1,000. That's, that's usually the normal range for a trader. Uh, Gilly, no, we're not doing auto billing after five days. You'll get a reminder if you want to if you want to join the group. If not, it cancels. When you log in after five days, you won't see these windows anymore. Okay, there's no auto billing. Billing, we don't do that. Um, I have a Scott Trade account. Is it twenty five thousand minimum for day trade? Um, yes, but it depends on where you're from, where you logged in from. Doesn't apply for everyone here. Um, I have a Scott Trade account. So do I, Joseph. Uh, they require 25000 in your account to day trade. Well, once again, if you have it, that's great. Some companies, you know, if, it depends on what country you are. You Sometimes it doesn't apply for everyone. But you could still do what you're learning, what you're doing here. Um, if you don't meet the minimum, you can still trade every three days. Uh, do you have a, Do you have trades every day? Frank, I probably do about 20 to 30 trades a day. But you know what? You only need one to make money. With everyone in the room, aren't you starting to... <laughs> no, no, I wish. Evan, God forbid, I had the SEC all over me. No, not at all. Because not everyone's going to, you know, listen, it, this is not for everybody, Evan. So um, the beauty about it is you get to see what it's like to be, you know, you know, being in the game and having fun, and then you go from there. Uh, do you trade before announcing the room? Do I do? Tra I do both. No, I, when I do my trades, I'm doing it in my announcements. You're seeing them when I'm going in and going out. Evan. Yes, Frank, I give entry and exit points, absolutely. But once again, it's not about watching me doing it. One of the things I do is I try to teach you guys to figure it out on your own. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, listen, I didn't realize what time it is, and I know that I have some of the staff members here from uh, Candlestick Forum, and they're probably tired. It is 9.30. I was only supposed to go to 9, but... Um, but you guys have been a great, great crowd. I'd like to thank Steve for having me again. Uh, and Becky running a great job setting this whole thing up. And Jim being here. Um, like I said, I'd like to thank all of them for having us, Cyber Training University and myself. It's always a pleasure talking to Candlestick Forum. And like I said, if you guys really want to learn and you want to see me trade and see what it's like to be with a 12-time champion and how I beat every school I competed against, do the five, take five. It's called take five. Take five for five dollars. It's almost like the lotto ticket. You know, take five lotto. Same thing. Five days, five bucks. Pay me a dollar a day. Let me show you, and you'll have fun. All right. So there's the link. Once again, I'm also going to give you my personal email address. If you guys are interested, here. Let me change the slide here. If you like a copy of my slides, or if you want to get that trader's journal. That's my personal email address. Email me now. I'll have my assistant send it out to you tomorrow. Okay? That's Fausto P at CTUCorp.com. Just do me a favor, guys. Don't spam me. <laughs> That's my personal email. All right, everyone. So thanks again. Thanks, uh, Steve. Thanks, Candlestick Forum. Hope to see everybody tomorrow morning. Have a great day. Happy trading.